Welcome back to another edition of This Week with Carolina's Commits here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones. Joining me is our director of football recruiting, Miss Dina King. And by the way, I am filling in for Brandon P., the, the one and only Brandon P. here on this episode. So this is my first football pod with you in a while, Dina, recruiting pod and first one in this series. So I'm real excited about jumping into this before we go any further quick reminder this show is sponsored by underdog fantasy we'll have a little bit more on them later in this show so dina if someone's new here just a quick just a quick little uh info tidbit on what we're doing you go over the top five performances of carolina commits from the previous weekend and then we preview the top three games coming up in the next weekend week six is in the book, so let's get into it. Number five, Luke Masterson from Franklin Road Academy in Tennessee. They defeated East Nashville Magnet 42-21. to 21. So why is he fifth on this list? I've got to give credit to offensive linemen. Uh, you know, they, they are never in the paper – for, uh, you know, it's always the quarterbacks and the running backs and the wide receiver, all the skilled guys. Uh, Luke's team is off to a 6-0 and start, and so he is the anchor on that offensive line for uh, Franklin Road Academy. So I just wanted to give him a shout-out because, like I said, you know, uh, linemen don't get a lot of credit, and I wanted to credit Luke and his efforts in helping his team off to a, a great start this year. Well, you know I have a soft spot in my heart for offensive linemen, always have, always will. And what I always think is funny is the fact that when an O-line is struggling, the fan base just beats them up. But when offenses are going great, they kind of forget about the O-line. All the skill yeah. guys get the credit. So I'm I'm with you on there. And on behalf of all former offensive linemen, thank you for including <laughs> an, an, an O-lineman in this one. Number four, Bryce Baker. We're going back to skill here. The 2025 quarterback from East Forsyth uh, High School. They uh, lost to Davie County at 41 to 28. So why is he on the list? Uh, he, you know, Bryce is having a great year, uh, had over 300 total yards, uh, Friday night had three touchdown passes. So another great effort for him, despite losing, uh, he is definitely among the top leaders in the state in passing. And, um, you know, people that follow recruiting, he's a kid that, you need to go watch. I know Kevin Roy got to see him down in when they played in Fayetteville. So uh, uh, he's the future of UNC football. You know, he's a he's a quarterback and he he's a dynamic player. So if you're in the area in Forsyth County, you need to to go check him out. Well, you'd have to. Take a long drive to check out Ryan Ward if you're from North <laughs> Carolina. You have to go all the way up the uh, up the East Coast. So he's third on the list. Rutherford, New Jersey, defeated Beckton, New Jersey, thirty-five to six. Why is he the third guy? Well, as me and Brandon has talked for the last few weeks, he is a two-way player for Rutherford, and he's standing out on both sides of the ball for uh, his team. Uh, caught a couple passes for 50 yards and had nine tackles on defense. So, uh, you know, Rivals has him listed as an athlete, and I think that's very uh, well-deserved because USC's recruited him as a tight end, but who knows? I mean, uh, we mentioned it last week that when he gets to campus at, at Carolina, I mean, there's no telling. I mean, they like athletic tight ends. We've seen that, and they really use their tight ends a lot, uh, more than a lot of other schools and stuff. So, But it's, it'll be interesting to see what Ryan, how, you know, when he gets on campus to see what, what he can d get done because he's been having a great year on defense side of the ball as well. Well, and let's – 
take a look at Bo Atkinson as an example of Mac loving guys that play that do skill things and also can play in the trenches. And he was a great tight end in high school playing DN right now for Carolina, making an impact every time he's in the game. The second guy on your list, Keenan Jackson, the receiver from Weddington, they defeated Dutch Fork, South Carolina, 17 to 14. He had a productive game in a low scoring high school game. But it was uh, a big statement win for Weddington, who's one of the top four A teams in, in North Carolina, going down to South Carolina and beating the program basically in South Carolina for the last six or seven years. Uh, Tommy Knox, who was a legendary coach at Independence, uh, is down at Dutch Ford, and he's basically – turned them into a powerhouse. Weddington went down there and, and got the win, and Keenan, six receptions, 107 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, so that was that was huge. That was a huge win for Weddington, a huge win for North Carolina High School football to, uh, against their neighbors from the Palmetto State. Another receiver, Jordan Ship, Providence Day defeated Christ School 59 to 21. He had a huge, huge, well rounded game. So, why is he number one this week? He caught eight passes for 126 yards with two touchdowns. And he also threw a touchdown pass, a 45 yard or so. Good all around game by Jordan. Um, you know, his numbers have not been as much as they was last year because, let's face it, um, Providence Day is a loaded team with all those stars on there. And some teams want to just try to take away some of the the better players. And, and Jordan has been targeted multiple times of having double teams and – and stuff, but he is a great leader. He still goes out there. He still blocks, and for the number one team in the state of North Carolina. So uh, I went with Jordan this year, this week because of his uh, well-rounded game. Well, we got the top three games for this coming weekend, week seven already of the high school football season. But before we reveal those three games, let's go ahead and hear a quick word from our awesome sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Yes, guys, we are so, so excited to be partnered with Underdog Fantasy. And we decided to partner with Underdog because it's the easiest place to play fantasy sports. And it's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry right now as well. And Underdog Fantasy has so, so much to offer, including their Pick'em game. And in Pick'em, you pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. It's so easy to play. Just pick two to five stats of your favorite players and choose whether they'll go higher or lower. And you can 20 extra money by going just five for five. They also have a best ball mania. If you think you know football, you need to check this one out. This year's best ball mania has $15 million in total prizes up for grabs with the winner taking home $3 million. So sign up today with the promo code HEEL, H-E-E-L, and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with that promo code HEAL to get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Must be 18 plus and present in the state where underdog fantasy operates. Terms do apply. And if you're concerned with your play, call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. Back to the show. Okay. Week seven is about, is almost here. It'll be here in a couple days. Three games. I think these are three awesome games, Dana. You you made some really good choices here, so let's go ahead and dive into those. Fuquay, Fuquay Varina versus Cleveland High School. We got Malcolm Ziegler in action. Yeah, Malcolm, uh, his team is struggling right now, one and three, but they play a tough schedule around the Raleigh area, and they got they're facing one of the top teams in 4A in the Raleigh area, Cleveland High School, the home of Omari and Hampton, as Carolina fans will know. So, uh, as Malcolm is playing both sides of the ball, he's uh, had some really big games for the Bengals, uh, you know, running the ball and, and everything. So, he's just one of those uh, – Guys that Matt Brown likes, uh, athletic, that's 
plays everywhere on the field. And uh, just, uh, you know, I picked that game because it's a, it'll be a, a, a big game in the, uh, the Raleigh area. Lanier, Georgia versus Buford, Georgia, and Tyshawn White. Lanier is 4-1. Buford is undefeated at 5-0. Uh, and uh, Buford is uh, ranked uh, really high in the national rankings. You know, they, they've got a loaded team. They played in North Carolina earlier this year at Mallard Creek. And, you know, Tyshawn White, he's been playing on both sides of the ball as well. So, uh, you know, i got to – Check up on both for for the players on on what they do on both sides because Tyshawn White he's a he's a dynamic wide receiver for that that team as well as a DB and Brandon saw them play Mallard Creek a few weeks ago so you know he was commenting on you know how they used him on both sides of the ball so a big game in Georgia Georgia football is you know. Awesome. When you first, yeah, when you, you y'all, you've went and seen games in Georgia, but you know when you talk high school football, first two states you think of is Texas and Florida, but Georgia is making a majorly push because of the talent that's coming out of the Peach State. You know, you, yeah, per, per and capita, that is why, it's that's good. that's it's why as good as North Carolina Texas and Florida per capita. That's why North Carolina has gone to Georgia to uh, get some of those players to, to come up. And one of them is, you know, having a great season already. Uh, Cayman Rucker, he's a Georgia dude. So, yeah, Georgia they're, football. They're all over the place. They're all over the place. Well, t- well Elijah Huzzy's from Georgia. It's, it, we can go on and on for, about the state of Georgia and, <laughs> and the prospects. Another loaded team. You, you mentioned loaded. How about Shamanad Madonna in Florida? <laughs> going up against Coconut Creek in Florida and Davion Goss. Yeah, Shaman Amadonna is up there too with uh, national rankings loaded, got several four and five stars, including running back Davion Goss. And, you know, his numbers are kind of down after, I mean, two a couple of weeks ago he had a really big game on, on national television. But they have a dynamic quarterback who is going to NC State, and they got a couple of wide receivers that are like five stars. So they they sling the ball <laughs> and everything. But I just I just like the the team that they're playing, Coconut Creek. That 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 is so you know that's I, I just I didn't look up what their mascot was, but that that just sounds like a cool high school to me, Coconut Creek. Well- when I've gone down there to cover basketball, I cover when I cover football, I stay different because the state football stadium is far away from campus. But Coconut Grove isn't too far away from campus, and I've stayed there a couple times when I've gone down there to cover basketball, and it's a pretty cool place. So, you know, you're gonna have coconut type names down there because mm-hmm. that's right there in the Miami area. That is a cool name, though. I don't like coconuts personally. Uh, I would, if I was on a deserted island like Tom Hanks that one time and had to resort to coconuts, I would be, a, I would probably not make it, but that is a cool <laughs> name for a school. So those are your three games. We've got your five players from last week, your three big games for this weekend. You and Brandon will probably, Brandon will probably be back next week with you to do this. So I've enjoyed uh, ch- putting on this hat. I, I haven't worn this hat for a while, so it's kind of fun doing this. If you like this video, Go ahead and click like. If you agree with Dina's takes for the five top players and the three big games this weekend, click like. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell so you get updates every time we upload something, which is often. And get by the way, basketball practice is now underway. We've got media day coming up here pretty soon. So we're going to have the overlap of Carolina basketball and a very good Carolina football team. So you don't want to miss our videos. So click that notification bell. Thank you to Underdog Fantasy, their first time sponsoring this podcast. So that's exciting as well. They do a lot of work with our drops and some of our other shows. So it's great to get them involved with this as well. She's Dina King. I'm AJ. On this particular show, we'll see you next week.